Hello everyone, so in this lesson we're going to talk about a rhombus. The previous lesson was all about parallelograms. So what is a rhombus? Well, here we go. So it looks very similar to a parallelogram, and in fact it's got many of the parallelogram properties. So to remind yourself, you should always look at three things for these shapes. You should look at sides, you should look at the angles, and you should look at the diagonals. So let's take a look at the sides. Well, some interesting things about a rhombus is that all four sides are the same length. So let me write that down here in the bottom left corner. All sides are the same. And you guys should really like stick this on your wall. Just keep learning it every single night before bed. You will eventually know it and it's going to really help you in a test. Because when you are in a test, you don't want to have to think, wait, is it a rhombus? Does the rhombus have sides that are equal weight? Is that a square? You don't want to have to do that, guys. Okay, that was me back in grade nine. It was a nightmare. I just passed grade nine. Okay, so the sides are the same. Another thing we always have to look at with sides is, are they parallel? Well, yes, for a parallelogram, they are parallel. I mean, for a rhombus, they are all parallel. Okay, there we go. So we can say here that all sides are parallel. Or, or no, uh, not all sides, sorry. Um, two pairs of sides are parallel, which means that these two are parallel and those two are parallel. They're not all parallel to each other. That can't happen. Okay, so we've looked at sides. Great. Angles. Opposite angles. Let's take a look. Well, logically, if you just have a look at this, if you look at this angle over here, you can see that it's less than 90 degrees. But if you look at this one here, you can see that it opens up more than 90 degrees. Okay, so we can't say that all the angles are the same. But what we definitely can say is that the opposite angles are the same. Okay, so, so these two are the same. And then I'll show this with two little lines like that. And then those two are the same. Seriously, have a look at that. Like when you're sitting at home, actually look at it and you'll be like, oh, right, it makes sense. The angles are not the same. Okay, so we've looked at the angles. And so what we can say for that is two, oh no, opposite, opposite angles are equal. Okay, now we just need to look at the diagonals. So with the diagonals, we'll just quickly draw them in. There we go. There we go. Now those diagonals are definitely not the same length. I mean, have a look at this. This one here is pretty long compared to this short little one going over there, right? So you must seriously just look at it. Don't memorize the stuff. Have a look at it. Like really um, stare at the picture and you'll realize, oh, it actually makes sense. So the diagonals are not the same. However, what we can see is that this half is going to be the same as this half, and this half is going to be the same as this half. So, Kevin, this pretty much looks like a parallelogram. I know, it almost is a parallelogram. However, a parallelogram doesn't necessarily have all four sides the same. But for a rhombus, it has all four sides the same. That is the only difference. Now, there's one little exception. Um, let's, call it, let's call it special features. Uh, some some special features about a rhombus is that these angles in the middle, they are all 90 degrees, okay? So we can say that uh, diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. That's important. We should have added here in our little list of properties that the diagonals bisect each other, meaning that the diagonals cut each other in half. Now, under the special properties, we can also say that the diagonals bisect at 90. That doesn't happen for a parallelogram. That's something special that a rhombus has. Something else that's really cool is the corner angles are bisected. What that means is that these halves are the same. Okay, so that means these two halves will be the same down here. And then the corner angles up at the top and the bottom left their little pieces are also going to be the same, the little halves. Okay, so we can say that the corner angles are bisected. Corner angles are bisected. That isn't true for a parallelogram, but for a rhombus, it is. Okay, guys, so that's it for a rhombus. Uh, we're going to do some practice examples now, but these are the different properties that you need to know. So here's a rhombus question. They tell us that A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Sorry for the small little letters. For some reason, I couldn't get those to be any bigger. So if you need a, micro, um, a magnifying glass, I would highly advise that. So it says here, determine the value of X. All right, well, one way that we can do this is we could see that 
um, well, DC, all, all the four sides are going to be the same, right? So we can say that um, AD is going to be equal to AB, which is going to be equal to BC, which is going to be equal to DC. Why? Because these are the sides of rhombus. That's my reason, sides of rhombus. We know that they are all the same. Now, why is this useful? Because this triangle over here ha is now isosceles. So we can now say that if you have an isosceles triangle, remember the two angles will be the same. So we can say that X is equal to B1. And the reason for that is because those are angles opposite equal sides. They are the angles opposite equal sides. That's my reason. So I know that X is the same as B1. Okay, so does that make sense, guys? These, this angle and this angle, they are the same. So now it's very easy to find what X is because I know that in a triangle, all angles must add up to 180 degrees. This is already 40 degrees. So I could say that angle X plus angle B1 plus 40 should equal to 180. Why? Because that's the interior angles of triangle. And so if you go do the maths, you'll see that um, you'd get 140 if you had to minus that. But then you can divide by 2 because they are the same. And so what we would find eventually is that angle X, or we can just say X, is equal to 70 degrees. Moving on to the next question. Here they tell us that ABCD is a rhombus. AD has a length of 13. So I'm going to fill that in over here. BD, so this long diagonal over here, has a length of 20. Okay, so that entire diagonal is 20. Find AE. So AE is this little guy over here. Or let me do it in blue. So AE is that one over there. Now, here's the way to do a question like this. Whoops, I nearly raised the entire question. So what I want to show you guys is have a look over here. If I do this, and I do this, all of a sudden I have colored in a blue triangle, but that blue triangle has a 90 degree. Remember we said that the special property of a rhombus is that its corner angles are 90 degrees. Aha, okay, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But what we can do is we can say that angle E2 is 90 degrees. Why? Because that's just the special properties of the diagonals. So you say diags of rhombus. That's the reason you could use. Your teacher might use a slight different, slightly different modification. Okay, now something else that we observed in our properties of um, rhombuses, if that's even a word, is that this entire diagonal is 20. But we said that the diagonals do cut, they do bisect. So it means that this half must always be the same as this half. So then what would the length from D to E? Well, that would be half of 20, so that would be 10. So we could say that DE is equal to 10. And that's also just because of the properties of a rhombus. And so now, guys, have a look here. Now, all of a sudden, we have that um, DE is 10, and it's a 90-degree triangle. So did anyone just say Pythagoras? Well, Pythagoras allows you to work in 90-degree triangles. And so we could work out AE. And so AE... Well, we know that Pythagoras says that you should always take the longest one, and that will be equal to the two smaller sides. So it would be 10 squared plus AE squared, and that is Pythagoras. Can you see that in the triangle that I'm working in? And now it's just a matter of solving for AE. So it will be AE squared equals to 13 squared minus 10 squared, and so AE squared is going to be equal to 69. And then to get AE by itself, you take the square root, and that's going to give us 8.31, 8.31. And there we go, guys. So that's a little introduction into rhombuses. Thank you very much for watching this video.